When starlight aligns in a specific way, our shadows come to life, plunging us naked into the depths of the underworld. The descent strips us of our illusions until finally we are born anew, rising from the underworld like the phoenix, shooting straight for the light of day, holding the promise of a new beginning. This is the transit of the black moon. Hello everyone, Laura Walker, oraclereport.com. This recording is the Black Moon in Pisces, and although it is primarily meant for those with the natal Black Moon, Sun, Moon, or Chiron in Pisces or Virgo, it's really for all of us because we are all experiencing this to some degree as a collective. Now the Black Moon will transit through Pisces until January 27, 2020. We've, all, we've been in it for a couple of months, and if you do not know which uh, sign your black moon is in, if it's in Pisces or Virgo, you can go to oraclereport.com under the Books tab, and my book on the black moon is there. It's a free ebook. Go to the back, look for your birthday and where, where your birthday falls within the range, and you'll see what sign your natal black moon is in. You can also contact Andrew, who um, does data and charts for everyone. Um, you can contact him on from oracleReport.com. There's a form there where you can sign up to have him run your chart or to find out when the black moon will be transiting any of your planets specifically. The, the primary transit of the black moon happens for one month um, for each planet it, it's um, involved with. Hopefully it's just one for you, if it is any at all, and it's good to know when that month is because the black moon hits hard, as we'll see, and you'll know what's going on, and <laughs> and you'll know when it's going to end. Also, in the description box, I will list the remainder of the, quote, black moon days, as I call them. This is each time, two times per month, that the black moon enters Pisces or Virgo. So those are the days when you're not really going to be at your tip top. So if you have that knowledge in advance, you can you know schedule accordingly. Because if you have any of those planets that I mentioned in Pisces or Virgo, those are the days when your energy is going to be a little bit lower because unconscious energetic processes are happening with the black moon transit. So this is not just for those people affected by the black moon in their charts, but really for all of us and how we can apply the information to what's going on in the world around us now. So the archetype of the black moon is both the devouring mother and the nurturing mother. As the black moon travels around our chart and makes aspect to our planets, we first encounter, sorry about that, <laughs> the devouring mother. We experience a fall. Some part of us, something that no longer serves our course of growth and evolution, is taken down or exposed. This is particularly true with the black moon in Pisces because it's directly related to feelings of being exposed and vulnerable and, and what we do when we feel that way. An experience can be quite difficult for us because the transits of the black moon hit us at very deep unconscious levels and we react to it from a core level of fear that is housed in the shadow side. Our shadow side rears up when the black moon makes transits. Anything from an episode of depression to an existential or soul crisis or psychological breakdown, a dramatic life change, any of these can happen when the black moon begins to come into effect. Oftentimes our reaction to the transit is quick and it's less than discretionary because we are operating from unconscious motivations. The level of takedown varies widely but can generally be determined based on the house and the sign placement in your chart. And when we have fallen, as far as we're going to go, we encounter then the nurturing mother. And this happens when the transiting black moon makes the exact conjunction or opposition to the planet. We feel like we're starting over or being reborn, but we're better than we were before. We're not only stronger and wiser, but we are cleansed. 
the transits of the black moon purge the emotional and physical restrictions or limitations that are blocking our way. They clear the field for new opportunities and experiences through renaissance, rebirth. Now the black moon has been misunderstood because it is often seen by astrologers as a purely malefic and dark astrological body. As a collective, humanity has a tenuous relationship with darkness. We tend to view and judge things from lenses of black and white and good or bad. And dark has become synonymous with bad, less so over the last few years since I wrote the book, but for sure we still are each of us dealing with our shadow sides. Ancient cultures understood that darkness is the time of the feminine serving its own special role in the balance of light. It's from darkness that all things are conceived. Darkness, or nighttime, is the time when we nourish and replenish ourselves. During sleep, we journey through our dreams all alone as our inner world comes alive. We face our inner darkness, and it's as natural as going to sleep, but we have to blanket anything dark as negative or something to avoid. And this has created a significant problem. Our denial of our own darkness is what has allowed it all to grow to such monumental proportions and we unknowingly manifest in the world at large. We do that. We, we project it out. Which sickens our, the collective of humanity and it's the place the archons hide in the shadows. So the astrology of the black moon brings unconscious, previously hidden information to light. It's an opportunity. Specifically shows us, one, our personal shadow side, two, the primary fear that blocks or undermines us in life, and three, the fundamental, fundamental way in which we judge ourselves and others. Recovering this lost knowledge or hidden knowledge about ourselves is an act of self-nurturance which speaks to the heart of the mother energy of the archetype. The black moon seeks to reunite all of the parts of ourselves that have been disconnected and abandoned bringing us into cohesive harmony and returning our full strength. Now Carl Jung's theory of the shadow side as the part of the psyche that contains our shortcomings and repressed weaknesses is the side of us that is unconscious and it's hidden from view most of the time. It's often called our dark side and, and each of us has one. We all do. Some of us have integrated it more than others. And it's the part of us that we don't want to acknowledge because we usually don't like it. And a lot of times when people first learn about their black moon, it does, they don't, they go into an automatic denial and feel like it doesn't fit them at all. But then as they think about it, because it doesn't go away, <laughs> once you learn it, you can't unlearn it. Um, we come to a different understanding. My take on the shadow side is that at its core, the shadow is the home of the primary fear, a fear that exerts considerable power in our lives. And it's called a primary fear because it is based at the primal or instinctual level and therefore operates on the principle of survival. The primary fear is the chief motivator for many of our choices in life. So each sign of the zodiac identifies with the black moon our shadow side and thus our primary fear. When we're dealing with the black moon, we look at the sign that the, that the black moon is in. Right now it's in Pisces. And then we also look at the opposite sign, which is Virgo, because the black moon operates on a polarity basis. So you will pull in um, both, some of, of both sides, but of both signs. Now the black moon in Pisces deals with the fear of vulnerability and harm. And the black moon in Virgo identifies fears of failure. It's intimately related to the fear of failure. Primary fears subvert our personal growth and feelings of happiness. 
They impede our success because fear is what stops us cold in our tracks when we are venturing into unknown territory, which we certainly are now. Our choices and actions are directly proportional to the level of control our shadow side exerts over us. When the fear that is contained in the shadow side is dominant, we feel unfulfilled and unsatisfied, to say the least. This prevents us from becoming fully empowered, integrated people. These fears keep us from actualizing our potential and sharing who we really are with the rest of the world. Since the shadow side is largely unconscious, it affects us without our knowledge. Usually circumstances that recur in our lives and cause us to say, why does this keep happening to me, are sourced in the shadow side. We continue to participate in a particular cycle of behavior, making choices without fully understanding what is going on with us. This is because it is difficult to make changes when we don't know what is truly motivating us. Decisions and actions that are made from a place of fear rarely serve us well. Our primary fears also cause us to harshly judge others and ourselves. To cope with our fears, the shadow employs a technique, as I mentioned, projection. Projection occurs when we externalize the feelings of the shadow side and transfer them onto others. Projection is the preferred method of the shadow because we always face in others what we're unable to face in ourselves. We are unduly critical of others. We, we're just actually manifesting our own feelings about ourselves. In fact, projection is the cause of most of our interpersonal problems. Just as shadows cannot exist without light, the black moon holds knowledge that is a great gift. Jung called this the gold that is contained in the shadow. Specifically, in addition to defining our shadow side, the black moon also reveals how we heal the shadow side and how we know true love. The astrology of the black moon reveals the path to wholeness. We are shown two halves of ourselves that need to unite in order to become complete. When the shadow side is brought into consciousness, a rare degree of clarity is imparted. Knowing the way in which we hold ourselves back and understanding the unconscious fears and motivations behind many of our responses enables us to make effective changes in our lives. Empowered with the knowledge of this missing piece of information, we can make choices that are more aligned with what serves our highest and best. In the process, we heal and transcend the shadow side. The astrology of the black moon goes one step further. And since love is the strongest healing power of all, and if the black moon gives us what we need to heal ourselves, it stands to reason that the black moon is intimately involved with love. In fact, love stories are intertwined in the mythology and themes of the black moon. It not only teaches us how to love ourselves, but it also teaches us how we know we are truly loved. So keep in mind that there are two sides to the black moon, a dark side and a light side. We often forget this. <laughs> to begin our study, we're going to first look at the shadow side, but we don't want to become mired in an association just with her dark side. The black moon defies boundaries and restrictions, and she always works, I call her she, always works on two levels, never just one. Tying the archetypal astrological ent entities solely to a darker explanation is misunderstanding its true essence. Now, the astrology of the black moon is inherently spiritual. At a very deep level, and from a spiritual or soul perspective, the black moon is the key area in the personality that reveals both our connection and disconnection with the source of love and abundance in the universe. When we feel connected, life flows smoothly and we experience a sense of harmony and oneness. In contrast, the feeling of disconnection from our source manifests in the form of our primary fear and lives in our shadow side. The shadow is the ego's facade of personal power 
that is used to compensate for the lack of faith in our divine connection and fulfillment of the desires through love and self a love of self and of source it's an instinctual remnant of the unconscious human ego drive for survival and self-gratification that blocks the pathway to self-realization and self-actualization it is the unconscious expression of the personality seeking dominance and protection in order to hide vulnerability all of this is controlled by the part of the brain that has been labeled the old brain the reptilian brain or the R complex the reptilian brain keeps us alive on the most primitive level levels but it's and it's responsible for feelings of rage and fight or flight responses that cause unpredictable behavior it overrides normal rational responses when we feel threatened in some way when the primary fear of our shadow side is triggered the reptilian brain engages and we react, react from an instinctual level since we are reacting from our most primitive side we usually overreact when we respond from the perspective of fear we set off a chain reaction of repetitive behavior we initiate a cycle that we duplicate every time our fi our primary fear is pushed generally we become angry or passively aggressive and project our feelings onto someone else we then invoke a poor coping skill to regain a sense of self-control and equilibrium in order to feel better it's a process that keeps us stalled in a robotic and dysfunctional system of stimulus and response X but button gets pushed and Y reaction follows and this is not the way sentient beings should live to understand what is really going on we need to examine the root cause of the primary fears the answer is quite simple but it takes time to fully integrate fears the result of one basic thing the feeling of separation from our spiritual source fears are spiritual issues incarnating as a physical being produces a byproduct of feeling separated or cut off from all that is or oneness the archetypal themes of the black moon reinforce this because it, it pulls us into that separation as spiritual beings we innately feel that we have lost this connection to oneness because we've separated out and incarnated and the density of our physical reality is profoundly different from our true nature most of us have forgotten that we are part of something much grander than ourselves and are never truly separate when we drift from this truth and lose our way our shadow side dominates and we engage the world from our darkest side this will happen primarily when the moon is in Pisces or Virgo through the black moon's transit of Pisces until January we can rec reconcile the shadow side and move back into a higher state of consciousness when we become intimately familiar with the black moon so the days that I list in the description box are the days where we, ha we do the most work each of each stage of rebirth we can learn how we're manifesting the pr our primary fear and in specific interpersonal issues that um, we engage in related to it and as we work with the information we can learn to identify when we're reacting from the fear of our shadow side and transcend it by remembering that is re it's really just a result of feeling disconnected from source and is not an inherent flaw on our part we can consciously rewire our brains to overrule the reptilian brain when our fears are engaged we can interrupt the circuit by choosing to respond differently in essence we can transmute our inner reptilian into puff the magic dragon and in the process we evolve when we have a face-to-face -face encounter with our black moon we're face to face with our shadow side and as a general rule each of us is naturally averse to acknowledging the shadow side and invariably we wince or step back as I mentioned because it touches a nerve it makes us feel uncomfortable in a vague sort of way 
having our shadow side exposed is a raw, vulnerable experience for many of us because the shadow side is deeply unconscious. usually takes a little while for the revelations of the black moon to sink in. The, as I mentioned, the astrology of the black moon identifies the specific primary fear. And so this is the shadow side is the container for our primary fear. So when we face the shadow, we're really facing our primary fear. And the black moon in each sign identifies certain personal issues that we carry and face on a regular basis. These issues form a large part of our personality and, and color our behavior, forming what could loosely be called our downfall in life. Our primary, our primary fear holds us back and prevents us from living our lives to the fullest. The black moon bestows the gift of this information to help us see through our self-sabotaging behavior and make changes that will free us from our self-imposed limitations. Healing the shadow side begins with understanding the shadow side. We must face our, face our primary fear by looking at it head on and then we integrate the understanding that the root cause is a feeling of being separated or come up, cut off from something greater than ourselves. So let's look at the black moon in Pisces specifically. So this is the shadow of trust and trust issues. The primary fear is the fear of vulnerability. What does that mean? <laughs> fear of anyone knowing the real us. Fear of showing the world the real us. Because that could hurt us. Vulnerability. A fear of being hurt. We judge ourselves based upon how stable we think we are emotionally. Which could be quite far afield from the way other people see us, especially with the black moon in Pisces. It's very good at hiding. The black moon the, in Pisces, Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. It's on its way out, you could say, <laughs> back to source, back, back to connection with spirit. It manifests in trust issues. And distrusting people who are too nice because they might want something or, and putting our trust in the wrong people. Not the people who are truly there for us and have proven their trust is worthy. Black Moon in Pisces has a tendency to put its trust in the wrong people. And this actually is just a way to continue that um, shadow side of vulnerability because if we put our trust in someone that we really know is not trustworthy, we haven't really um, risked anything because we already knew that outcome. It's much more difficult for Black Moon and Pisces to put its trust in what, who's closest to us and who is truly there for us. The person or people that we should be trusting the most. Okay, so that, that putting, putting trust or, um, ex or allowing our, our vulnerable side to be shown to somebody who isn't, um, we don't know very well perhaps you know or that we know that are, that just isn't the right person for us we somehow put more power there which keeps us still able to protect the vulnerability because we know on some conscious sub subconscious level that they're not trustworthy the goal for the black moon in pisces is to let down our walls with appropriate people and to be able to discern who's appropriate and to focus on ourselves as much as others. Black Moon in Pisces is tender-hearted. Can be afraid that if others discover that, they'll use it against us. There's a tendency to judge people and situations based on the potential of being hurt. We may find it difficult or open to be open, fully intimate with other people. It's often hard to trust others and we test them until we feel safe. So even if you do not have the black moon, the sun, or the moon, or Chiron in Pisces, you may be experiencing this right now because that energetic is present. It's just a part of the personality that's um, being brought up to the surface to be reconciled. 
the shadow can show up overtly in unmistakable emotional walls, but it can show up subtly appearing on the surface to be very open, but upon closer inspection having definite commitment issues. On the flip side, we can also make commitments before trust is gained. By prematurely trusting, we face betrayal or disappointment. And in this way, a vague sense of safety is maintained since a deeper sense of intimacy is never attained. The sense of being separated from spirit is acute with the black moon in Pisces, and the intense desire to not be present in the here and now can lead to emotional addictions, addictions to substances, or escaping our own issues through focusing on others or other means of escapism. There's a lot, a lot right now that we might want to escape. <laughs> to heal and transcend the black moon in Pisces, the need to put up a wall of protection must be faced. Life can be painful and people hurt us whether they intend to or not. And we need to learn to trust the people we know we can trust. Usually this is the person we are with the most but proportionately open up to the least. We tend to hold ourselves back. But this is a crime against our souls because Pisces is naturally closest to spirit and has much to share with others. The shadow is healed when we trust that we are strong enough to withstand any offense. And I think this is a very key point of where we are in the world right now. So, if this is your black moon, or one of those planets in this sign, ask yourself when you feel most vulnerable. In what situations do you cross your arms and cover your chest? How do you cover up or cover over who you really are? Consider who you physically, intellectually, spiritually, and emotionally open up to the most. It is important to look at the level of trust we have in people around us and honestly assess if our trust is well placed. Balancing the shadow of trust is just as much about not placing trust in the people that you know you shouldn't as it is about allowing someone else to see who you really are. The opposite sign, the black moon in Virgo. This is the shadow of ability. The primary fear is the fear of failure, and we judge ourselves based on how much, or in others, on how much someone works, or how much we work, or progress, or improve, or fix. The issues involved are related to feelings of being inherently flawed, deeply and inherently flawed, and extreme self-criticism. We project the feeling that others are not performing well enough or are incompetent. So if, if you're finding yourself thinking about what everyone else is doing wrong and, and not stepping up to the plate or, and doing, um, doing the wrong thing, that's time to look back at yourself. And are you projecting? Is it, it might be valid what you're seeing, but are you also looking at something about yourself? The goal with the Black Moon in Virgo is to not focus on flaws or failures, to not do things to excess, and to not feel responsible for everything. The Black Moon in Virgo finds flaws and then it internalizes them. It manifests in chronic dissatisfaction, particularly with oneself. With this placement of the Black Moon, we often find it difficult to feel positive about ourselves for great lengths of time. All too soon, a generalized feeling of being not good enough creeps back in to maintain internal disequilibrium. This constantly challenges our abilities, and in an effort to prove ourselves, we could tend to maintain a very full schedule. And we work very hard, but can have trouble seeing the forest for the trees, as we are operating under the spell of having to do more and more and more to prove ourselves and to and prove to others that we are not flawed. This shadow is the most adept at self-punishment. With the Black Moon in Virgo, the need to find fault must be faced. A healthier state of mind is achieved 
when we recognize that few things are absolute, all levels of, of ability have something to contribute, healing this shadow requires understanding that flaws are an illusion. The crucial thing to understand is that we interpret the feeling of separation from source as somehow our fault. Everyone has the feeling of spiritual disconnection, but the black moon in Virgo, Virgo personalizes it. This is the root cause of why we feel flawed. To heal the shadow, we must accept that to some degree this feeling is merely a byproduct of the physical experience of life. So, if this is coming up for you, examine where you feel you have failed. Upon closer inspection, what caused the quote failure? Was it really your fault? Was there really more you could have done or was it just not meant to be? Can you forgive yourself and others for not doing better? Can you walk away from failures and feel enriched simply by having had the experience. Time is the true test of what is, at the time, perceived to be a failure. By focus on the experience as opposed to the outcome, the shadow of ability is healed. This transit, the black moon through Pi in Pisces through January 2020, tests us to the limit, tests our trust in, some, in God, in something greater than ourselves, trusts ourselves to be who we really are, and tests our ability to remain connected to the notion that all life is valuable. It intensely tests the tendency to project and to project, project illusions and to wonder if we're seeing things clearly or not. The Black Moon in Virgo is very analytic. So remember, we're working with the Black Moon in Pisces, where the Black Moon is now, but it also pulls in the polarity of Virgo. Every time the Black Moon is involved, it's going to involve both signs. Now, you may have, let's say you have the sun in Pisces, not the black moon. Not, your black moon is not in Pisces. You're having the black moon transit to your sun, which will activate your own natal black moon, which might be in another sign. And so you're dealing with two, two layers. There's always two involved with the black moon. The actual sign that the black moon is in and then the triggering of whatever your black moon is, whatever sign your natal black moon is. Let's say that's Capricorn. You're black, you have a black moon in Capricorn, but you're a Pisces. So you, your issues related to your black moon of appreciation, recognition, feelings of people supporting you, those are going to be tied in with the transits, especially those two times each month when the moon goes into Virgo or Pisces, and then the month that the black moon makes comes up to make that exact conjunction. It starts going into effect three degrees before the degree of whatever planet it's aspecting. And when it hits that exact conjunction or opposition, because this is the primary way that the black moon operates via opposition or conjunction, then the rebirth happens. Then the, the healing and the integration and the great opportunity happens. Now, you may begin to experience some relief right at the very next day when the sun rises. You might feel differently. Because the black moon makes us very, very tired and um, can make us negative and depressed and angry. When that transit, is, and, and we feel like it's going to last forever, like what is happening? I, you know, need a therapist because what's going on with me? It isn't necessarily that you need a therapist. It's that you, you're facing your shadow side, and if you know what's going on, you can work with it yourself because it's going to end. It's going to be a month that is an intensive transit, and then a little bit each month, a couple of times, until January 2020. And when 
the black moon completes on January 27th, 2020, and then moves into Aries, then the blooming begins to occur for all those people that, that the black moon in Pisces was aspecting. It, like I said, it may not take until that long. It may end your, your journey through the underworld because that's basically what it is. It's a one-month journey into the underworld of ourselves. You may begin to the rebirth process right then. For others, it's longer and, and takes until the black moon completely leaves the sign. I highly recommend that on the days when the moon is in Virgo or Pisces that you schedule in time to rest and, and go to bed early or just any time during the transit. It's going to make everyone more tired. P Pisces energy dra is draining because it likes to go into the dreamy world. It is not comfortable in the physical world and so it likes to retreat. It's very, very important. The most important thing you can do during black moon transit is to rest because it's the black moon is going to go in and then work on the unconscious level in your dreams, whether you remember them or not, on the etheric fields of the body. This is where this is happening. Rest is important. Self-care is important. Um, Pisces is highly creative. So any kind of artistic expression is wonderful and in fact you can do some of your most beautiful work during a black moon and Pisces transit. <laughs> we should have some lovely things being created right now. It's the last sign of the zodiac. This is the black moon completing its go around the zodiac which takes eight years and ten months to do. To further understand what might be going on go back to nine years ago when the black moon was in Pisces and see what was going on for you then. What is happening now that's related to that that might be an evolution of that that you can see progress from. You can go back nine years before that. It's just it's a pattern and it's the, the planet planet the astrological body the luminary what that doesn't illuminate <laughs> whatever we want to call it we don't really know what it is. Um, but it will bring out beautiful things and Pisces can go deeply into that void and bring out something very beautiful from the experience which makes it meaningful. I hope you have found this recording helpful. Don't forget to check out the dates so you're aware of that and you can prepare for that and plan accordingly. You can shift down into low gear on those days, do yourself a favor. <laughs> Not the day you want to be uh, striking out with something if you can avoid it because you're just not at your tip top. Remember, it's a shadow side being worked out. Thanks for listening and I will see you guys next time.